Hello everyone and welcome back to Scooping Poop with Vivian. I'm Vivian Cao and this is a channel where I help educate you on exotic animals and help you make the best decisions for your pets. So if you like what my channel is about then be sure to click the subscribe button and also turn on your notification bell. If you're planning to get a leopard gecko in the future and you want to know exactly what goes into their diet then you have clicked on the right video. This here is my pet leopard gecko. Her name is Sprinkles and she is a full-grown adult female. So getting started right away, leopard geckos are insectivores. This means that they are a type of carnivore, a meat-eating animal, but they almost exclusively eat bugs. And I'm telling you this because unlike certain other pet lizards, they are not omnivores and should never be fed vegetables or any other type of meat source, such as dog food or cat food. So when it comes to feeding your leopard gecko, you have a ton of options in the world of feeder insects. You're going to have to choose the correct insect size for your leopard gecko. And the way to tell is the distance between their eyes. That is generally a good rule of thumb. You don't want anything bigger than that or else they could choke. Right now I'm going to go over a couple of the main options and give you the pros and cons of each. Starting off, we have crickets. These are kind of the classic insect in the world of reptile keeping. Crickets can be really good for leopard geckos because they are super duper cheap and you can usually get a lot of them for a very small amount of money. Unlike most dry worms, crickets have a lot of moisture, so they have a pretty decent meat to shell ratio. So with crickets, their calcium to phosphorus ratio is not perfect. So whenever you do decide to feed crickets, you have to dust them with a calcium supplement. It's okay if you're a beginner and you don't completely understand what calcium or phosphorus means. To give you the most basic idea, essentially insects contain both calcium and phosphorus and you want the ratios to be equal in order to provide the best nutrients for your leopard gecko. So for the majority of insects, it's important that you always add supplementation before you feed them to your gecko. When it comes to crickets, give around five to seven in each feeding. So if we're going to talk about the cons of feeding crickets, one notable thing that is very annoying is the fact that keeping crickets is kind of a pain in the ass because yes, they are loud, they're noisy. They're also kind of disgusting because they smell really bad and they have a very short lifespan of only a couple of weeks. So the next bug that we're moving on to are mealworms. And mealworms have been a classic staple when it comes to geckos for a very long time. Because they are what I call dry worms, they certainly don't have as much meat and as much moisture when compared to other insects such as, again, crickets and also wet worms. Just like crickets, you can find mealworms pretty much anywhere and they are also really, really cheap. And the best part is that it is very easy to store mealworms. You can usually just keep them in the container that they come in and pop them in the fridge and they will go into a hibernative state. And that's very crucial because when mealworms are kept at room temperature, they will pupate. They turn into darkling beetles, which are inedible to leopard geckos. In each feeding, you would generally want to feed around 15 to 20 mealworms in one sitting depending on how much your gecko wants to eat. Another worm that is great for leopard geckos are super worms. They are also known as king worms and mario worms. Mario worms or mario worms? It's a me, Mario. And unlike mealworms, they cannot be kept in the fridge because they will die at that cold of a temperature. However, one good thing about superworms is that when you keep them together, even at room temperature, they will not pupate. Superworms nutritionally are not as good as mealworms, but I still really like them because of the fact that they are so convenient. Oftentimes, having to fish mealworms out of a container in the fridge and then wake them up with their body heat takes too long and superworms get the job done super quickly. And because they are so big, they're also juicier and meatier. When it comes to feeding superworms, I would feed around three to four in one serving. One thing to note about superworms, however, is that they have a interesting reputation of chewing through an animal's stomach and crawling back out. I would like to emphasize that this is really rare and usually it is seen in animals who are already sick or who are very small. That's why I would not recommend giving your gecko superworms until they are an adult for that reason. 
And my favorite staple feeder insect are dubia roaches. When people hear roaches, they automatically freak out and think of the American abomination that is a roach. Our president. <coughs> I'm sorry, what? But not to worry, tubia roaches are very stupid creatures. They can't fly, they can't bite, they can't even climb up a vertical surface, so don't worry about it. Tubia roaches are so great because they have the best nutritional profile of pretty much all the feeder insects. <laughs> they are a very juicy, high meat to shell ratio insect that will really satisfy your leopard gecko. Another aspect that is so great about them is the fact that they live for around two years. Meaning that unlike crickets, you can actually buy a lot of them and they will not suddenly just die off. The only bad thing about dubia roaches is the fact that they are substantially more expensive. However, if you are super serious about dubia roaches, you can actually start your own colony. Although war Warning, if you do have a cockroach allergy like me, don't do it because you will die. But as with all of these insects, you can actually get them from online sources. So make sure that you stay until the end of the video and I will give you a couple of places for you to shop. The bright, beautiful green alien that captures every reptile's heart are hornworms. These are definitely what I consider a wet worm because hornworms are around 90% water. They're like a watermelon. And that is great because they are big, juicy, and filled with moisture. Hornworms are also super duper healthy and can actually definitely make a staple for a leopard gecko diet. However, again, just with dubia roaches, they are expensive. And hornworms are usually used as a treat because of that. Because they are so meaty and juicy, I would recommend feeding one to two per serving. I was literally going through my mind looking at this list and I realized that pretty much every single item of insect on this list are worms. So here we go again. Black soldier fly larvae, otherwise known as phoenix worms or calci worms. Now these are an amazing staple for your leopard gecko because unlike all the insects I have mentioned, their phosphorus to calcium ratio is actually perfectly balanced. Meaning that if you want to feed this insect, there's no need to dust with calcium at all. Just like mealworms, they can be stored in their container in the fridge and they will last a very long time. Although there are slightly more height maintenance because you're going to have to keep the container moist. Yeah, I said it. Moist? So that they don't shrivel up and fall off. Just like my t With black soldier fly larvae, I would say around 10 to 15. Although I'm not completely sure on that number because I've never fed them alone as a whole meal. And lastly, this is definitely exclusively supposed to be used as a treat. They are wax worms. I've never eaten a wax worm before, but according to most leopard geckos, um, they taste very good because some specimens actually get so picky after eating exclusively wax worms that they will purposely deny any other food. So they might have a slightly addictive quality. So definitely just save it as a treat. Give one or two a week for good behavior. I don't, I don't know. And when I'm talking about the amount to give a gecko, this applies to all ages of leopard gecko. Just make sure you give them the correct size. For example, a baby certainly wouldn't be able to finish five to seven adult crickets. However, if you give them appropriately sized crickets, such as the little tiny baby ones, they will certainly be able to eat five to seven. So I've given you so many different options, but that does not mean you can just choose one or two and call it a day. As with any kind of animal, diversity is key. Don't be racist. You definitely want a variety of options when it comes to insects for your leopard geckos. I would say a minimum, a bare minimum of three types of insects put into rotation. And most people do know this, but as a subtle reminder, do not ever, ever, ever give your gecko insects that you have found outside, insects that you have found in your house, insects that are wild, or anything of that sort. You don't know where the insect has been. It could have been exposed to pesticides or be carrying internal parasites. Just why do it, you know?
However, just these insects alone do not cover every single aspect of a leopard gecko's diet. This is where supplementation is very important. And unfortunately, we will not be going over the detailed uh, supplementation guide in this video, but I do have one coming up really soon. The three ones that you definitely need are calcium, calcium with D3, and multivitamins. I'll have a few links below, and again, a new video about that will be coming out soon. So I'm sure you're asking, well, um, what about all of the leopard gecko food that's sold in pet stores? And I will just tell you right now, don't do it. You see those little pellets and freeze-dried insects and canned insects and just dead processed foods designed for leopard geckos at Petco and PetSmart. Don't do it. No. These commercial diets simply do not do your leopard gecko justice. If you cannot commit to keeping live insects in your house, do not get a leopard gecko. How do I actually do it? How do I feed a leopard gecko? You want to give them one opportunity per feeding day to eat all of their food in one go. Something that I really dislike is the concept of free feeding your leopard gecko, where you take a little dish, you fill it up with worms or, or crickets or whatever, and you just keep it in there and they eat when they want. And then when it's empty, you take it out and fill it up with more. That, in my opinion, is setting yourself up for failure because this way you cannot track the actual amount of food your gecko is eating. They might be overeating, undereating, and plus you miss out on the joys of feeding your gecko. So for every time you feed them, just give them one session to finish all their food. And of course, along with all your insects, be sure to provide fresh water 24 seven. Just put it in a little dish and change it periodically. So how often do you do it? The frequency of when you give them food depends on their age. So baby leopard geckos that are just a couple of weeks old need to eat every single day. Juvenile geckos that are around a couple of months old eat every other day. And then finally, adult leopard geckos will eat every two to three days. Anyways, I hope that this video has helped you understand the world of leopard geckos and how to feed them. And I also hope you enjoyed Sprinkles, my beautiful little girl. I'm starting to do weekly shout outs in my videos and this week's shout out goes to Harry, the other side of the screen. So basically she has been a loyal subscriber and follower for a really, really long time. And pretty much in every single video they have left really amazing supportive comments. So there you go, that is your shout out. If you want to be featured in next week's shout out, all you have to do is comment down below anything be sure you're subscribed to my channel and also follow me on Instagram at Scooping Poop. If you did enjoy this video and it helped you out, be sure to give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to join our Poop Scooping family. Also comment down below if you have a leopard gecko and what are your favorite insects to feed them. Thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video I make. Bye! It's a bit of a different setup in the background. You have doors.